Jesse is a friend. Is this the only song we could play by Rick Springfield? Here he is. Rick, sit down. Hi, how are you doing? All right, uh, Rick Springfield. Uh, we were talking about you considerably earlier. Daytime TV star, rock and pop star, uh, literary star also. New, New York Times bestseller, Late Late at Night. My wife uh, devoured it. It's funny, she was reading it first because you're like a heartthrob. And, and then I picked it up because it was so dog-eared and she was so buried in your book. And I'm a, a recovering uh, former, you know, look, 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 look. Yep. Uh, and I, I <laughs> nice code. By well, the I just way. don't want the kids to hear. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and so the kids up. know all about it. Trust <laughs> yeah, me. They Seriously. do. There's an internet. Now. The yes. Yeah. So I, I started reading your book, and it was very fascinating. I, I uh, and this is the last book. We're going to get to the new one. Right. Uh, uh, but you were very open, and you told your whole story about being how you could be super famous and yet insecure. Mm-hmm. At the same time, and uh, and I thought, wow, uh, that's it's really revealing, and I, and you know, and Lisa finished the book and loved the book, and then all of a sudden, something I didn't expect, another Rink, Rick Springfield book appears, and I thought. Did he relapse and has he got a whole new drunk log? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a whole book about the DOI. Yeah. I found but, a box of Polaroids. I forgot this even happened. I know, because I thought I thought in the first book you revealed all, but now they tell me that you were this is fiction. This, wrote, this is my first novel, yeah. My first so, work of fiction. So this caused us to have a discussion about what's a hobby, what's a career. And you were case, you're one of those rare people with multiple careers. Like writing's not a hobby for you. Uh, right. This well, is, it, yeah. it's the thing I love to do the most. I mean, I think we're lucky if we can. If you, I think the luckiest thing is to, if you work at something that you love. And and I love music. I love writing. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I mean, I still, I still say I got to go out and play. You know, I don't say I got to go. I got to go out and work. I say I got to go out and play. I mean, when we have to do shows and stuff. So. And acting, I've seen you in shows over the last few years. Yep. You, uh, do you have to do all three? Yes, it's mandatory. It it's kind of yeah. Yeah. tattooed on the back of my neck. You've <laughs> got to do this. Or well, die. if you start doing one of a, a lot of one, do you then miss the other, or is it just that uh, opportunities come yeah, in? Yeah, it's opportunities. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I uh, I could go back to General Hospital, something like that. But mm -hmm. it's, it's there's other things I want to do with acting. I mean, after I, I did uh, Californication, and uh, and that was. You were great on that. One, well, thank you. With once, Marcy. Once you, oh, man. <laughs> amazing scenes. Yeah. When, once you work with great writing like that, it's, it's kind of hard to go back, you know. Um, it, is it also hard to do a schlocky show without great... And I'm not going to mention soap operas by name, but is it hard to take something that was really edgy and then you would want to do something else edgy? You wouldn't want to go back to like a... A it, it makes it harder going back to to all uh, to you know stuff that isn't as good as it's not as good. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's it, it's it's soap ops to, soap operas are the toughest thing for actors, the toughest thing for writers, and mm -hmm. the toughest thing for directors because they've got to churn out so much. So you know a lot a lot gets. Uh, kind of lost it in, in the mix. That's why this show isn't that good. Because we have to churn <laughs> it out every day. Same reason. If we made one a week. If oh. we could just do mm. one a week. Be or awesome. a movie once a year about us. Right. So, all right, so how are you personally? I don't know much about you personally, but how are you? Uh, I'm good, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I'm happiest when I'm working. And uh, writing is, is a great, you know, you, uh, you alluded to, I think, my depression issues in my, uh, that I talk about pretty openly in my autobiography. And um, the, the solution for that to me is to work. I love to work. I love writing. And to put, to, so whenever I get down, I... I I do something with that rather than just let right. it get and, me down. And, and if I remember what my shrink recently told me, you never entirely, you don't overcome depression. You just interact with it differently, right? It's, it's a life sentence. It's not, you, can't yeah. go, you can't go to rehab and, and kick it and come out and say, hey, I'm all good now. So it's, very, it's difficult for that reason. It's so do that. you still have some insecurities? Like when you write a novel, mm. you're jumping off a diving board. You're taking a risk. You're saying, oh, it was, you know, I could tell my story and that would be interesting because my fans would want to know, will they follow me down an entirely new premise where I make up a story? Right. Is that, does that scare very you a little? Very much so, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very scary thing whenever you, you put something, whenever I put something I've written out, whether it's a song, uh, I hate playing new songs to people, uh, I get very nervous when people... You get that sense that they all just want to hear Jesse's Girl? Well, well... Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not really that. It's like, what if they don't like it? You know, this, what if this they song, don't these like new it? Yeah. songs that I've invested my, this book I've invested my time in, this, 
Uh, and you, you put your heart out there. I mean, there's a lot of me in this book, although it's fiction, the characters are still start from a, a point of truth, so, and then as the story takes over, they, they grow, hopefully. The book is called Magnificent Vibration, and, and as an author, you're going to be at the University Bookstore tonight at 7 p.m. I'm guessing there's already people in line. I was wondering, how does Rick Springfield have the time to write a book? Because you're also going to be at the Tulalip Amphitheater with Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo at the end of July. You still play hundreds of shows a year and i assumed you must do your writing in that downtime that is travel for exactly musician. exactly right and it's a great use of uh, we travel a lot i fly everywhere and i love to fly and i fly everywhere and uh i started actually on vacation i started this book uh, last year on vacation because i'm not i can't i can't sit still mm. <laughs> and i can sit maybe at a, at a beach for maybe 45 minutes, then i got, I got to go do something. And that was Joe's theory, that the travel time gave you the opportunity. To, yeah, but doesn't it cut into your ability to be good at portable video games? Yeah, it really does, yeah. yeah. I, I, have, I have one video game, Zombies, ver Plants vs. Zombies. That I, oh, I like that. Plants oh. vs. Zombies. It's, it's great because it's mindless. And I actually writing is destroying your abilities, yes. When you take a risk like writing a novel that you don't know how people are going to respond to, is that... Is that a scary thing, or can you view it as therapy? That either way it goes, it's going to be something you can grow from and learn from. And yeah, I, I do. I do have that that thought that I that as I'm doing it, I'm putting a lot of time into it. If it, you know, I've written albums that didn't do anything that I that I thought uh, were great. That you loved, you know, great records. Yeah. yeah. Quick question, because we can we can hear it. Best song you've ever written that you thought should be a big hit, but didn't become a big hit. Like uh, well, off the last record, there's a song called "Our Ship's Sinking" that, that I think I still think it's. A Maybe hit. you should have titled it "Our Ship is Rising High" and it's never going to sink. So a song called "Our Ship's Sinking." Yeah. Pedro will find that for the uh, end of the interview. Mm -hmm. Wow, T synopsis this book a little bit for us. It's really it's an extreme novel, and it, and it's uh, it's really hard to uh, to. It's there's hard a lot to of twists and turns, okay. uh, and it's a lot of surprises. But um, it basically, it starts out a 32 year old guy. Named, named Bobby Cotton. He's uh, just gone through a brutal divorce, hates his job, hates his life. He steals a self-help book called Magnificent Vibration, Discover Your True Purpose. And on the inside cover is a handwritten note, 1-800-CALL-GOD. So he gets on his cell phone and makes this call and doesn't believe. He's going, yeah, who is this? Who is it? Eventually it turns out that it is actually God, and God has a bit of an attitude. <laughs> wow. And, and is very upset with what we've done for, to his beautiful planet. And so it's, it's dark comedy. It's like, you know, yeah. like, wow. like my autobiography. Well, was Bruce dark Almighty comedy. and uh, what was the George Burns movie with John Denver? Yeah, this, you're God. this were, God has a serious attitude. Though. Right. Uh, were, you, were you a fan of those when you were growing up? Like uh, sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, it, it, this came out of me w always wanting to be able to talk to God. I mean, mm. what, what's, you know, the whole thing of faith and all that, I get that. And, but I, I, I love dogs. I'm a big dog freak. And, and, and we're you the could talk to dogs. dogs. What's that? You could talk to dogs. Could, and, yeah. But we're their gods. We yeah. feed them. We create everything for them magically. <laughs> they yeah. worship we, we, us. And literally. we pet them. And, and they feel great because we pet them. Why right. can't we get a freaking pet from God every now and then? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why does he? Why is it such a one-way street? Exactly. Yeah. Well, because he knows every crap we've ever pulled. Talk about a guy who's got all your... Dirty laundry. Right? Well, we know, know about our dog's dog, crap too. We dog, have to clean it up. My dog chews up my wife's shoes, so I know all that bad yeah. stuff too. I still we love them. We get a pat from God. Think about your esophagus, that beautiful mountain. The no, I know. I, I do. I do get that because I, I believe. But but wine. It, it, wine. It, it's it's. I mean, I I love the earth. I love how beautiful the earth is. I I live by the water. Every time I drive by the ocean, I, I never. I I, I totally. Same thing, my God, this is unbelievable. What a beautiful planet. And part of the reason to write this book, not the reason, but, but part of the story in it is that we are trashing the Earth. And, 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 and it's, you know, they've just found out that, uh, that ice in Antarctica has now uh, gone past yeah, the a western tipping point. Shelf yeah, the gone. And, yeah. and the whole, there's a lot of things in the book about God being very, very pissed off about the fact that we have been bad stewards. Speaking and, of, have. but it's humorously written. It's not a preachy thing, mm -hmm. and, and it's humorous. And uh, you know, speaking that. of trashing things, Rick, rock critics can be pretty tough. Literary critics can be brutal. They're brutal. But oh, the critics yeah. are are praising your book and comparing it to some other great works, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, stuff like that. Do you read your reviews? I do actually. Those um, ones he reads, which is real. I, well, they <laughs> they send they send me. Well, these we actually these are pre-published reviews. These are ones you send out the book and you to get some public some mm -hmm. uh, advanced reviews. And they're from there's one from Booklist and Kirk, and one from Kirkus, who are the literary 
they're the literary magazines. They're the industry magazines, and they love to ram on guys like me. Right, that, exactly. That say, hey, I wrote a couple of pop songs. I'm going to write a book now. And they love to ram on guys like me, and they gave it rave reviews. So we're re- I'm, I'm re- very jazzed about that because it, it, I am, it is an unknown area for me. Although I'm confident in my writing, uh, it's still an unknown area for me, wow. and, and I'm opening myself to, up to a lot of garbage if it's bad little known fact people who give rick's books bad reviews it's been found their wives yell rick springfield during sex <laughs> and they've got an axe to grind yep, yep. they really do you are uh you're married as yes. to your sweetheart and you have two children is that right two boys yeah we've been ba- married for 30 years and i have a 27 year old 25 year old oh my boys. gosh they're fully grown kids mm. how do they turn out are they they're depressed awesome. like you at all ever they what do they ever get depressed and do you help them? Uh, yeah, they have they have their issues for sure. I, th- I think it's gen- genetic to a degree, but but they're uh, they're great kids. And 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 th- I, I took time off in when 1985 when my first son was born. I pulled the plug on my career and just stayed at home to help raise them. And that is that that's been the gold for me with them. Now you're from Australia. We were just talking about that's right, mate. Uh, we were t- hey, Bloody yeah, out. you don't have much of the accent. Oh, by I the do, way. mate. You just got to bloody listen. That's all. I would, I, 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 I would forget it. and not realize it if you know if I if I hadn't you know researched. Uh, but uh, but you, uh, it, we were talking about different uh, countries do different things. Like Australian people give you more maternity leave. Australians have better better this, better that. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you locate in the United States? Primarily for career, and do you miss Australia? You went back there to get married, right? Yeah, I did because of my, you know, my mom and my dad's church is there. My, my dad died early, and he has a window in this church. But oh. um, I, I came over here absolutely to pursue my career. But I, I could have gone to England, but everyone was going to England and Australia, and I wanted to come to America. I tried, so I tried writing to the embassy in Mexico. I tried writing to the embassy in, in, in Canada and thinking that maybe I could sneak across the border. I was desperate to get here. I was going to make it happen no matter what. And I happened to meet a guy who said, I'll bring you over. You know, so uh, it's... It, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm not, he was twisting in his pants. <laughs> we're all know looking what, at you, you know. I don't know what this is, to be honest with well, you. you. What is I that? have no idea what this is. That's part of the mic stand. You have ADD, oh, it? don't you? Yeah. Uh, so no. do I. <laughs> so do I, I didn't mean to two. distract you. I do have a question, but I didn't that, want to interrupt it? you. It's very it's weird. Of, I don't know what that is. It's part, it's part of, of his microphone. Oh, oh okay. You broke your microphone. There you go. Yeah, when suddenly started Australia, you know Australia, U.S., do you miss Australia? Oh, I miss Australia very much, but I've become an American citizen. I've lived here longer than I lived in Australia, and my family is here, and my, uh, you know, my friends are here. And, uh, and it's such a long flight that you get an entire chapter completed on the way there. I, and I did. Yeah. I did. I, I go there every, I go there every, every we go there because actually, I'm actually touring there in October for the first time as a solo artist. And even Australians forget I'm Australian. So. Right. T- tonight at University of Bookstore, you're, it's a literary tour. I assume you take a pen to to sign books. Do you take a guitar too? Do you perform at all? I have done I have done performances at some of the book signings. I don't think we're doing it tonight, but but uh, we you know it's an easy thing to do because I'm also doing a stripped down tour where it's just, just a storyteller kind of acoustic thing. Please it's clarify a, that you won't be stripping at the won't be stripping. No, no, no. It's, it's, that, that was a joke. <laughs> the strip <laughs> down <laughs> tour is a joke. Seriously, yeah, right. Man. Sure. No, uh, so so we got a lot of uh, a lot of songs and, ready for acoustic. Guitar. I also <laughs> heard your guy uh, uh, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame coming. Do you know who you're next to out there? I do. We did that last weekend. Actually, it was uh, as done. Where I'm in front of the uh, Clear Channel building, which is no the Live Nation building, which is a good thing. Okay. And uh, but no, what star are you next to? Oh, uh, Don Cornelius and Freddie Fender. Wow, nice. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good, good company. Yeah. Solid, <clears throat> uh, your I was friends. hoping it would be outside a porno store, but they, they put it outside. Uh, <laughs> in L.A., nature. how did you avoid that? That's I know. very odd. All it's right, in a uh, good area, yeah. actually. It's actually I used to live two blocks when I first came to America. I lived two blocks from where my, the star is now. Wow, Grammy Award-winning musician. A daytime television star of legendary proportions, and of course, uh, his uh, author, uh, author of Late Late Night, Late Late at Night, New York Times nonfiction bestseller. Now his fiction book, which is called Magnificent Vibration, sometimes heavenly intervention can put you through hell. We have uh, first the song you were talking about. What was the name of the song again? Our ship sinking. Our ship sinking. This is Rick Springfield's personal favorite of his. We play a little bit of this. All the information about the book and everything else is on our website, BobRivers.com. Rick Springfield, good to see you in person. Thank you, Thank you for stopping in. Yeah. Okay.